So our USLS leadership panel of, of professors and uh, MLOs and a whole slew of people with their students. So um, Me uh, Megan Jeanette Myers is assistant professor of Spanish and affiliate faculty in the US Latino Law Studies program. Uh, Myers has recently published Mapping Española, which you uh, saw the beautiful uh, uh, cover for. That's from the University of Virginia Press. Mapping Española considers the ways Dominicans, Haitians, and their U.S. diasporas have imagined the physical and metaphorical borders that divide the island of Española. She is currently working on a, a co-edited, uh, co-editing an anthology titled The Border of Light's Reader and has published on Caribbean and Latinx literature and in journals including Hispania, uh, Jericu, close enough, thank you, Confluencia, and Caribe. Myers has an active research agenda in the field of scholarship of teaching and learning and was a 2018-2019 Iowa camp, Campus Compact Engage Research Fellow. Okay. And uh, Megan, I'll let you introduce your students. That's great, thank you, Brian. Oh, perfect, okay, great, okay. So I'm going to really quickly, before introducing the students, give you a quick rundown of this course and then I'm gonna turn it to the students for the majority of our kind of 10, 15 minutes here um, to start this panel off because I think they're the ones you really wanna hear from and they're the ones who have the experience taking this course. So if you could go to the next slide, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this course that was new starting last spring, USLS Spanish 325X, Culture and Community, Iowa Latinos, Latinas, and the Immigration Experience. So if you go to the next slide, please. Great, just a few pictures. I'm gonna really briefly outline some of the course objectives for this new course here last year. Um, one thing in particular is that the students with me at the beginning of the semester actively shaped the syllabus. So the students really decided what it was they wanted to focus on in this course. Um, and what they decided was that they were really interested in the rhetoric surrounding immigration in the state of Iowa. The majority of the students were from Iowa. Many identify as Latino and Latinas themselves. And that's what they wanted to talk about. So we spent most of the classes here at Iowa State in the actual physical classroom talking about things like the 2008 Postville raid the Molly Tibbetts case, right? And talking about how some of these events have transformed and shaped the way that we talk about Latinx studies in the state of Iowa in particular today. Um, we also had many visitors to the class, um, both virtually and in person. And the really important thing to outline before I turn it over to the students here is that every other week we had a, com we had a required community engagement component to this class. Um, so every other week we traveled to Perry, Iowa, about 35, 40 minutes away, maybe 45 in a 15 passenger van. <laughs> um, and we built a mentorship program working with ESL students in the middle school and high school there at Perry. And we also had um, visits from Perry community members to our course, as I mentioned. And um, we also had one day where we just traveled, and I see some other students from our class, we traveled to Perry and just did a community visit, kind of a, a scavenger hunt in the community, met members of the community, learned about um, their experience living in that community, becoming a valued member of that community. And that day we had so much fun. I think most of us ended up staying, you know, like an hour past the class time, and it's a three hour class block. So um, it really was um, a wonderful experience, both the community engaged part and the course where we were in the physical four walls of the classroom here on campus. Um, I'll also just mention a couple of the projects they did because some of the, uh, these awesome, fabulous, amazing students will talk about them. We tried to use this knowledge in a really practical way. One of the things the students did in the beginning of the semester was create infographics on a topic of choice related to um, Latinx studies in the Midwest. And we then put these infographics, laminated them and displayed them on, in Pearson Hall on campus. So students um, from around the university could also benefit from the knowledge that um, these students had and were, um, you know, things they were learning in the course. And then there was also an unessay, as I like to call it, a final project where students really had free reign to curate a project of their own design. Um, the students will talk about these, and I also should mention another one. There's a poster for one over there called Alas, this amazing new program at the Ames Public Library that a student envisioned in the spring course and is now an intern at the library and seeing this, pro this program to fruition, which is amazing. It starts next week. Um, so but with that, I want to go to the next slide and introduce these wonderful students who enroll in the first kind of rendition of this course last spring. We have Grant Sincox, Gianna Dakin, Seeler, I never, Seeler, Seller, Seiler. Thank you, Jana, and also Ariana Delgado Ruiz. So thank you for being here and sharing your experiences. I'm going to hand it off to y'all. Thank you. Grant? 
All right, so um, my name is Grant, as previously mentioned. Um, I am a Spanish major studying, um, well, also studying uh, English as a second language and also secondary education because I want to be a public school teacher. Um, I took this class because I saw it was going to count for my Spanish degree, one, and also um, I am very interested in the topic of immigration um, because I, um, my, my hometown is Marshalltown, Iowa, as um, aforementioned, um, which has a very high um, immigrant population, most of them being from Mexico and the rest of Latin America. Um, and because of that, you know, I, I drew a lot of connections in my life between um, kind of the, the rhetoric surrounding immigration um, kind of before this current political climate, but then um, also like, you know, what we're in right now. So I, I just thought it would be really interesting to learn more about that. Um, and then in terms of the class itself, we actually did like a lot of coursework about um, the history of immigration and Latinos in the state of Iowa. So um, some things that really fascinated me were like the people um, that maybe came from Latin America a long time ago, but have been in Iowa for generations, I mean, longer than my family has, and how they still face discrimination. I mean, it was just a very um, enlightening course for me. And then the um, coursework that we did, well, I guess it wouldn't really be coursework because we went to Perry uh, to interact with the students, but it was the community engagement aspect uh, of the course. I really enjoyed that because I got to meet a lot of students from, I mean, all over the world, um, hearing their stories, um, learning about their lives. It was just very eye-opening and very um, humbling to talk to so many kids. All right, my name is Gianna dakin -Seiler. Um I'm a non-traditional student. I um, originally came to Iowa State. Um, I grew up here in Ames. I came to Iowa State right after high school in 2005. Didn't graduate. Um, got married. Life happened. Um, part of that life was actually becoming a secretary for the Ames Community School District um, and working in the district office. While I was there, I, um, I was the food service secretary, so I was dealing with the free and reduced meal applications, um, dealing with a lot of low-income families, and having the perspective of growing up with a single mom. Um, I was one of those kids back when I was in Ames, um, and trying to relate to the people coming in and applying for the um, free and reduced meals. and. <laughs> Because I originally studied Spanish when I was here the first time around, I was dragged into a lot of conversations with the registrar's office and busing to try to explain concepts to Latino families um, when my coworkers couldn't do it. Um, so I, one thing I can remember is um, a Latino family registered their kids um, right before school started. We already had busing assignments arranged, and they, we have a blackout period from when the day school starts until after Labor Day to solidify the routes, and then we add more students. So I had to explain to a Latino family that they had to find a way to get their students to school the first week or two before they would actually be put on the bus. And the concept of a blackout period is a very American thing, and trying to find the words after not using my Spanish skills for 10 years um, was very difficult. And that helped me to motivate me to come back to Iowa State. Um, I'm a secondary education Spanish major with an ESL endorsement and a Latino studies minor. Um, so the reason why I wanted to take this class um, when my advisor Floor mentioned it was the opportunity to work with the students in Perry. Um, I got partnered up with an ESL student and uh, having conversations with her, like that was what I was looking forward to because I wanted to get to know the type of students that I could be potentially teaching. And um, I wanted to know more about what was going on, um, the history of immigration and reference to Latinos. Because when I was in the school district office, those conversations came up. How are we gonna handle if ICE comes to our school? What's our plan? What are we gonna do? Um, things like that and hearing comments of all the workers that I worked with um, from administration to the custodial staff to educational assistants and teachers what the rhetoric that was around there I wanted to have more information so when I go back out into the schools I can be supportive of the Latino community and really bring understanding to the people that I work with My name is Ariana. I'm a criminal justice major in my last year, and I am a Latino studies minor. Um, I 
the minor part kind of happened by accident, and a lot of things in my life have kind of happened that way. But um, I actually wanted to get a Spanish minor, and I told my advisor, like, hey, you know, I want a Spanish minor, but by the way, I'm fluent in Spanish. She's like, cool. I show up on the first day of class to Spanish 101. And um, so I had to do some adjustments to my schedule, and I saw Latino studies. I'm like, huh, that sounds interesting. I don't really know a whole lot about my own, like, heritage history, so, you know, I'll just take it, Intro to Latino Studies. And lo and behold, I loved it. I learned so much that I had never heard of in my entire life, and uh, I just added it as a minor. Um, the reason this class was especially of interest to me was because I was undocumented for 18 years. I barely became a legal resident last October. So my one year anniversary is coming up. Um, and so obviously immigration has al always been a huge interest for me. Like I remember as a kid knowing that I was undocumented and kind of knowing what that meant. And so when, you know, I wanted to watch Barney, but I knew I had to watch the news to see what the new immigration policies were and who's in power and who's all these things. Like I never really had a choice. I knew that I had to pay attention because I didn't want to get deported. Um, so growing up undocumented, I thought that I couldn't go to college. And a lot of people have that misconception that because you're undocumented, you can't go to college. And once again, by accident, I find out, hey, you can. And um, I found out that Iowa State is actually one of, well, I don't know if it is still now, but it was the only public university in Iowa that offered in-state tuition to DACA students which um, some states in the country like do that, but Iowa's not one of them, so it's kind of up to the universities to decide. And so that's a game changer because I could pay in-state tuition instead of international or out of states, which is a huge difference. And um, when we had our engagement with the Perry students, I wanted to make sure to tell them, hey, you know, you can go to college. And especially with my own men, uh, mentee, I told her, like, hey, do you think about going to college? She's like, I don't know. I don't really, like, it's nothing I don't really think about. And so I would just open up to her and tell her, like, my journey and how I accidentally came to college. Basically, I found out you can get in-state tuition. You could apply for private um, scholarships that go to any university. Kind of all those little loopholes that you can find to find a way to go to college because I wanted to make sure that she didn't find out by accident or um, how many of my peers never found out and missed on so many opportunities. I wanted to make sure that our, our students didn't go through that. And I was very open about being undocumented and everything and telling them, hey, your options are not limited. Um, and she actually went from saying that she didn't know she wanted to go to college to saying she wanted to uh, go to college to study criminal justice, just like, just like me. <laughs> So yeah, it was just, uh, I never realized how much of a change we were making in these kids' lives, um, just from going every other weekend for like an hour-ish and just sitting there talking to them, telling them about us, hearing about them. And um, until the last day, actually some of them cried because um, they were upset that it was the last day that we were gonna see them. So I, I, this class was just amazing. I just, it, it was great. Nothing I could change about it. And we're going to end um, by showing Ariana's un-essay project mm -hmm. for this course. Just the first two. It kind of is a cliffhanger, isn't it, at the end yeah. of this? But we'll play the first two minutes. Yeah. And I think five seconds. Um, I don't know if it's queued up. but Oh, it's the link at the bottom. Oh, maybe it's not queued up. but yeah, You might have to copy and paste it. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Um, kind of a quick little um, before the video starts. My an essay, what I wanted to focus on was um, what I called undocumented stories. So uh, my story as a DACA student, how that affected, you know, just my general life and my life coming into college. And another one of um, my friends who actually went to high school with me and I didn't know was uh, undocumented up until we got to college. And she's also graduating next year. So I wanted to talk about my story and her story. And the whole video is about 17 minutes long, but we're only showing you about like two minutes as a cliffhanger so you can go watch the whole video. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. 
They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. I guess you could say I grew up like a normal kid. I grew up knowing that I was an American and that I had all these freedoms and that I was very fortunate to be in a country where I could be who I want to be. But it wasn't until I started growing up a little bit more that I realized that I wasn't legally an American even though I felt like one. I remember my parents would say, no tenemos papeles, you know, we don't have papers. And being so confused by that concept and going over to the printer and showing them papers and being like, no, we, we have lots of paper, what are you talking about? And learning the story of how we immigrated to the country without proper documentation and the whole terrifying story behind it. We lived pretty well off in Mexico. We, I mean, my dad was an attorney, so we were pretty well off. He became a judge and then he wanted to run for office. So between him and his friend, they were gonna run for office together. But this is when violence in Mexico got really bad and they started getting death threats, but they didn't take it seriously up until the point where my dad's friend was actually murdered. And my dad started getting all these death threats as well, and there was two attempts on him. And him and my mom got together and said, you know what, we, we can't wait for the third time. And so they decided that we were gonna apply for a tourist visa since becoming a legal resident was gonna take 14 years. And just wait things out in the U.S. until things got better. Yeah, sorry, that was a terrible <laughs> cliffhanger. But please, we'll share this on the USLS website. And let's give a warm round of applause to these awesome students. 